Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on synaptic mechanisms. In this video, what we're going to talk about is uh, total internal reflection fluorescence microscopy, which is usually abbreviated to TIRFM, TIRFM, or often just abbreviated to TIRF, uh, so I'll write it out in full at least once, total internal reflection fluorescence microscopy. Okay, so this is a technique, total internal reflection fluorescence microscopy. This is a technique which can be used um, to see a little strip of a cell, basically. And we're going to use it in the context of uh, seeing synaptic vesicles released from cells. Okay, right. So the structure of this video, then, how I'm going to uh, divide it up is I'm firstly going to talk about the type of cell that we are going to image, which is a type of cell known as a chromatin cell. So I'm just going to give a brief introduction as to what those cells are. Well, really just a reminder. Uh, and uh, then we're going to talk about the stain that we're going to stain them with, which is a stain known as acridine orange. We're then going to talk about the method of total internal reflection fluorescence microscopy. And... Um, Finally, we'll see what the results of doing uh, this total internal reflection fluorescence microscopy is. Okay, right. So firstly, let's talk about the type of cell that we're actually going to image. It's a type of cell known as a chromaffin cell. Okay, so a chromaffin cell. Now, what is a chromaffin cell? Well, basically, it's a cell of the adrenal medulla. So the adrenal gland, if I draw a little adrenal gland here, the adrenal gland kind of looks kind of like this. So these are the glands that sit atop the kidney. So you have two adrenal glands, one above each kidney. Okay, and roughly the adrenal gland can be divided into two portions. The adrenal cortex, which is the outer portion here, so this is the adrenal cortex, and um, <coughs> cortex I believe is some uh, old, uh, it, it's the word that was used in some old language. I've think probably in Latin, uh, for uh, the outer shell of something, the peripheral shell or something, right. And then this inner bit here, this is known as the adrenal medulla, and medulla means the middle portion, basically. So this is the middle portion of the adrenal gland. Okay, now, the adrenal gland secretes a huge number of hormones. The adrenal cortex is involved in secreting uh, steroid hormones, and there are three different layers of the adrenal cortex, which all secrete different steroid hormones. Then the adrenal medulla is where you find these chromaffin cells. You have lots of these chromaffin cells within the adrenal medulla, so I won't draw too many of them. So here are all these chromaffin cells within the adrenal medulla. Okay, and these chromaffin cells are the ones which actually secrete uh, adrenaline, which was of, named after the adrenal glands. So these cells secrete adrenaline, or the American name for adrenaline is epinephrine. So adrenaline slash epinephrine, they're the same thing. Okay, and these chromaffin cells secrete uh, adrenaline slash epinephrine into uh, the bloodstream, and that's elevated, their level of secretion of it, it is elevated in response to the um, sympathetic overflow. So when some stressful situation happens and we're preparing for the fight or flight response, the sympathetic nervous system uh, fires um, diffusely and activates the adrenal medulla cells, specifically these chromaffin cells, to start releasing their adrenaline slash uh, epinephrine into the bloodstream, and that causes many effects in, in, in the body, such as, um, well, making the heart beat faster and beat stronger, things like that. Okay, right, uh, so that's chromaffin cells. Now, the important thing is that they secrete this adrenaline, and in order to secrete adrenaline, that means that they're going to have lots of secretory vesicles. So, if we draw a chromaffin cell, large here, then this chromaffin cell will basically be filled with synaptic vesicles, which will, well, not synaptic vesicles, although there is some good, the, these cells are thought to be very much so like neurons, because if you remember um, from, um, 
If you remember from the sympathetic nervous system, basically, um, usually what happens, okay, so if we um, draw, how should I draw this? We'll draw the spinal cord here. Usually what happens is that you have sympathetic neurons coming out of the spinal cord. So let's say here we have a sympathetic neuron. And then what will happen is the sympathetic nerve is known as the preganglionic sympathetic nerve. And it will go to one of the sympathetic ganglia in the ganglionic chain. And then it will synapse on a postganglionic cell. And then the postganglionic cell will synapse on its target. So this is known as the preganglionic neuron here. Preganglionic neuron. Ganglionic neuron. Okay. And this neuron here is known as the postganglionic neuron. And they synapse in some sort of sympathetic ganglion here. Okay, postganglionic neuron. And the sympathetic ganglion will have uh, the cell bodies of all the postganglionic neurons within it. Okay, so this is the postganglionic neuron. And this is the sympathetic ganglion here. Which are, uh, they sit in front of the vertebral column, basically, as far as anatomy is concerned. Sympathetic ganglion. Okay, right. So, um, usually what you have is, as I say, you have this preganglionic neuron which comes out of the, uh, out of the, out of the spinal cord, and then it synapses in a sympathetic ganglion, and then the postganglionic neuron then goes and synapses on the target. So, let's say we have our target over here. In the case of the adrenal chromaffin cells, what you have is you have the sympathetic neuron coming out of the spinal cord and it goes straight through the sympathetic ganglia without synapsing and then synapses directly onto uh, the chromaffin cells, the adrenal chromaffin cells. Uh, so it's almost as, light, as though the adrenal chromaffin cell functions as this postsynaptic neuron which is releasing uh, adrenaline slash epinephrine into the bloodstream. And indeed, postganglionic uh, neurons of the sympathetic nervous system, they often, they will, they always, nearly always, uh, secrete noradrenaline uh, slash norepinephrine. So there is a nice sort of correspondence between uh, postganglionic neurons and adrenal chromaffin cells. Okay, so um, adrenal chromaffin cells then, they have these synaptic vesicles which are filled with adrenaline slash epinephrine which they are ready to be released. So we're going to now discuss how we can do a total internal reflection fluorescence microscopy on these adrenal chromaffin cells. Right, so first thing, let's discuss the dye we're going to use. So the dye we're going to use to visualize the synaptic vesicles is a dye known as acridine orange, okay? And I want to discuss with you the structure of this dye. Um, because it's important uh, for its chemical properties, and its chemical properties are important for understanding how it's going to be sequestered into, into these vesicles within the uh, chromaffin cell. Right, so firstly, let's start off with the structure of the chemical molecule known as acridine. Okay, and acridine is a rather beautiful chemical structure. Okay, so acridine basically is three six-membered rings stuck together. So I'll draw the skeletal structure of this because it's more beautiful. Okay, so here's your first uh, six-membered ring. Then your middle six-membered ring is the odd one out. It has a nitrogen down here, okay? And then the final six-membered ring is just another six-membered carbon ring here. Okay, so where I don't draw atoms, where I just draw corners, that means a carbon atom. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 carbon atoms. Okay, right. Now we need to put on the single and double bonds. So it has alternating single and double bonds in every single one of these rings. Okay, so then what you have is double bond here, double bond here, and double bond here, double bond here. That is the structure of acridine, basically. Acridine. Oh, it's already there, but never mind, I've started it now. 
So this is the structure of acridine. And of course, whenever there's a free bond, so for instance, this carbon here only has free bonds at the moment, so it has one spare bond up here, that will have a hydrogen off it. Okay, so this is the structure of acridine, and it's rather beautifully symmetric. Okay. Now let's see the structure of acridine orange. So acridine orange is just a modified acridine molecule. So we'll draw out the acridine molecule again. So these six membered rings here. Okay, so here's our first one. Then our second one here with the nitrogen at the bottom here. Okay, and then another bond here. Okay, and then final six membered ring, which is six carbons this time. Okay, and then we need to put in the alternating single and double bonds, so doubles here, doubles here, doubles here. Okay, now, what do we have to modify to turn this into acridine orange? Well, basically, what we have to do is stick off nitrogen atoms here, and also here, so it remains so beautifully symmetric. And then, you also have methyl groups coming off these nitrogens. So we're drawing a skeletal structure, so the way you draw methyl groups is you just draw a line and then it's implied that you have a carbon on the end of these. And then, because the carbon only has one bond, it's then implied that all the other bonds are to hydrogen, so these are methyl groups. And again, you have two methyl groups off here. So this now is the structure of the diacridine orange. Now, when you look at this molecule, what would your guess be with regards to whether it is an acid, or whether it is a base, or whether it's just neither? Well, we have these uh, amine groups here, we have these nitrogen atoms. Now, nitrogen forms free bonds, and it also has a lone pair on it, because nitrogen, if we look at the nitrogen atom, nitrogen has uh, five outer shell electrons. So it has two that are paired together, and then the other three are on their own, and the other three will form these covalent bonds here, so they'll gain at, uh, electrons from these other carbons here, so they'll share electrons with the carbons to form these single covalent bonds. Okay, but the point is this here, this lone pair of electrons, each one of these nitrogens here has a lone pair of electrons. Now, basically, if I draw these lone pairs on in pink, these lone pairs are a centre of negative charge. They've got two electrons sitting nearby, so they're a centre of negative charge. Okay, and what can happen is that protons in the um, surrounding fluid can come and bind, well, associate with, not bind, associate with these lone pairs. They can be attracted to the negative charge of the lone pairs because the proton has a positive charge. So it comes and associates with this lone pair of electrons. Now what that is going to do is it's going to give the whole acridine orange molecule a positive charge. So the answer to the question of whether acridine orange was a base or an acid is that it's a base because it's capable of receiving protons. It's capable of having protons bind to it. It's capable of taking protons out of the medium and binding them to itself. Okay, so it's a base, and when, when it becomes protonated, like so, it's going to gain a positive charge. Now that's important, but for staining synaptic vesicles, the reason being that when you gain a positive charge, you're now a polar molecule, okay? Now, when the acridine orange molecule is unprotonated, when it's neutral, uh, then it is very lipid soluble. It's got these huge, great aromatic rings, which are very nicely lipid soluble. So, the idea is this, if we put this acridine orange onto our chromaffin cell here, okay, uh, what will happen is that before it gets protonated, it will be able to nicely diffuse through lipid bilayers. So it will diffuse into the cell, it will diffuse into the synaptic vesicles. Now, what do we know about synaptic vesicles, or just uh, vesicles that are going to be exocytosed? Vesicles containing neurotransmitter. We know that they have a very high proton concentration within them, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.